All right, we are thrilled to be joined by NBA champion and Cleveland Cavaliers legend Tristan Thompson before the playoffs, helping us get ready for the Orlando Magic season. Uh, Tristan, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. I like the intro. Appreciate that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I like that. Champion, I like that. I've got well, Justin's got to gas up a fellow Canadian, you know? Yeah, That's really exactly. important. Exactly. Nice. I've got the uh, the painting of Cavs legends behind me, and you are firmly on that. Excited to have you. Uh, this is the third time in your career that you've kind of got to experience this extended play-in break, where, you know, in those four finals runs, you guys only had one, maybe three days uh, time off before the playoffs started. Does that kind of change your perception of momentum heading into the playoffs, for better or worse? Do you, do you find that's a, kind of a hard reset? Uh, I think it's uh, it depends on your team. I think it depends on the type of team you have. I think for us having young guys and having a younger team, I think uh, um, you know less less time off might be better for us. Of course, if you have an older, more veteran ball club, I guess more time is better just because guys get more time to rest their body. So for our team, we're kind of like an in-between bunch. So um, you know, guys are doing whatever they need to do to stay fresh, and whether it's versus climber or playing pickup like today when we got up and down it was very beneficial for us yeah, yeah. uh you know obviously Boy, you've you've made deep playoff runs with this franchise before but with a entirely different team what kind of similarities do you see in past iterations of uh, of the Cavs uh heading into the playoffs and and maybe what differences do you see um, i mean this i mean obviously this this ball club is obviously significantly younger um, but that that's not a knock to it at all. I think with our team, we still have a lot of experience, even though we're, we're younger in years. But, um, you know, we have shooting like we had shooting before. We have bigs like we have bigs before. We have a guy that can go downhill like Donovan Mitchell. So, um, and we have a point guard like like Darius, like we only had Kyrie. So uh, we have a little bit of everything. I think um, the only real difference is probably just uh, the – the age when guys were born. Some guys were born in the 90s, 2000s. Teams up in the past were born in the 80s and 90s. So that's a little different. Um, going back in parallels between those teams and this one, your ability to defend one through five was one of the most crucial factors of why the Cavs at the time were able to neutralize what was really the best lineup in the league in the Golden State Warriors death lineup. And now as more teams kind of imitate what the Warriors did with the split cuts and whatnot, Players of your defensive archetype are essential for playing defense in the modern NBA. What has seen that kind of transformation from NBA defense has been like for you to, to witness? And how does it uh, feel to be on, on, you know, a Cavs team where you've got two other big men that are capable of providing that type of defensive support? I mean, it's huge. I think, like you said, you know, our Cavs team, I think, probably started that whole wave in terms of having a big that can um, <clears throat> guard one through five. And uh, I think that was part of that whole regime. So... For us right now, with J.A. and Evan be able to do the same thing? And I think if you look around the league, whether it's uh, Bam, whether it's, um, you know, A.D., you know, if you the, the list goes on, you got to have a, a five man that can switch out and guard, if not one through five, two through five, because at the end of the day, the pick and roll is at such a high volume where, you know, those bigs that like the bottoms of the world and those Paul Gasol that were in the deep drop, you know, those those there's too many opportunities where, where guards are too good now they can get downhill and put pressure on the rim, but also uh, it creates a lot of shooting on the on the opposite side. So you gotta have bigs that can be up to touch, that can do multiple guard, multiple actions, and I think uh, we have guys that can do that on our team. Evaluating last year's playoff run, like something we kind of felt was that the Cavs didn't have a ton of levers to pull. You know, they they kind of had their style and they were going to play that. Obviously, now you have a George on the team. You have yourself on the team. You have a guy like Max on the team. Guys that kind of can create that stylistic versatility. How important is that in a playoff series to be able to kind of tweak the way you're playing that 5 to 10% to kind of meet your personnel? Well, listen, every playoff series has its own entity, right? So, for instance, you know, uh, last year, when they played against the Knicks, it was it was very physical, but they but they didn't have enough shooting, right? So that was an area of, of of emphasis this summer where Kobe went to go sign, you know, guys like Max and Jordan and in terms of physicality, bring a guy like myself that can come in there and, and change the game physicality. And I think uh, in order to make a deep playoff run, you got to have different looks. You got to be able to put on different masks. Some series might require more spacing and shooting, like when we used to play against, you know, Indiana in the playoffs. Or some series require more physicality when we play the, you know, the Hawks or Toronto, right? So, in order to give yourself a deep playoff run, you gotta kind of be able to play different styles of basketball. And I think for our team, we kind of have different guys that are that are 
good at different areas that can help our team, you know, accomplish that. One of the things, you know, from those runs was you had obviously the high level support of guys like LeBron, Kyrie and Kevin, but there were so many contributions from other players that stepped up within the flow of the offense. Uh, obviously, game six, 2016, I think that's one of the greatest individual performances any Cavaliers player has had. And, and you were just so impactful in that game. Mm -hmm. Is there something that you can kind of share and draw from with that experience, telling guys like Isaac Okoro and, and all these other players to, you know, create those opportunities for themselves with their aggression and, and kind of create the, those event type plays that can change a series? No, what I always tell people is that role players win you series. Role players are going to win you series because at the end of the day, the stars are going to be the stars, and every team has a star. So I always feel like those guys kind of uh, cancel each other out, right? So what it comes down to is whose role players can play better and play at a higher level and impact the game more. And that's what, I tell, that's what I've been telling guys since the beginning of the season. Uh, I've been mentioning that the last couple of weeks is that the role players are what's going to win the series. So guys like Isaac, guys like Karras, uh, guys like George, guys like Sam, you know, those guys are going to have big moments where we're going to need them to play big in order to give ourselves a chance to win a game where, you know, Sam might just come in and make two threes, force, force Orlando to call a timeout and switch up their whole game plan. But those six points are going to be so crucial because it's going to open the floor up so much for guys like Darius Donovan and, and Jay in the pick and roll where that's, that's those little, those little micro wins in, in within the game, uh, within those four minute marks is what changes the whole series. Uh, you're about to go into a series against a, a Magic team that, you know, from what I've seen is just really impressive with how they play with physicality, how they mm -hmm. kind of leverage their size. They're big, you know, positionally and, you know, just in the more traditional sense. You know, in a lot of ways, they are, they, they bring a lot of the same things to the table that the Knicks brought last year. What kind of things are, is the team doing to kind of counteract that or prepare for that? Is it just be ready to hit them harder? Is it play with tempo to get them from being set? Like, what kind of things are you thinking about uh, as a team? Well, I think the number one thing is definitely got to set the tone early. I think you got to come out and let the refs know, let Orlando know that, you know, we're going to be the more physical team. Even if it means there's early fouls called on guys, you want to set the tone early with the referees so they know the style of basketball you're going to play, but also lets the referees know, like, this is the playoffs and, you know, that those calls you make in a regular season, you can't do that again. And then for also with, with a team like Orlando, they're very similar to how Toronto was um, even post Kawhi when they would play, you know, Ananobi, Siakam, uh, Chua, when they kind of almost had like four or five guys, Scotty Barnes, when they had four or five guys that were all about six, seven and taller. You know, Orlando kind of has that same makeup in terms of a lot of guys that are, yes, yeah, so are they taller and bigger in length? Yes, but if you put them in multiple rotations, they're not used or accustomed to giving that much or that many efforts. If you watch them this season, teams that get to the second, third side have had good success against them and they'll and they'll let you get in the paint. Um with this with this Orlando team, knock on wood, you know, they're they're not at the top of the league in terms of their three point shooting, but they do a great job cutting and moving off the ball. So for us defensively, we gotta be on our antennas and know that, you know, even if your guy's driving, even though you're helping your teammate, you're still gonna have guys that are cutting from the opposite side that are gonna come to you, but you gotta kinda keep your head on a swivel. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is there a piece of advice that you've shared um that you feel comfortable sharing with us that, that you've kind of told Evan Mobley, either in preparation for the playoffs or um, you know, throughout the course of the regular season, just being ready for this kind of moment, being able to, to step up and make the, the kind of impact that, that he's going to need to as, you know, one of the pillars of this franchise. I mean, yeah, I think Evan knows what, what's at stake. I think he knows uh, and he knows what we expect from him. We, he knows what we're going to need from him, especially, um, you know, especially with this series when they go to Mo Wagner in the, in the second unit center. You know, he's physical. He's chippy. He's going to get into you. He's going to hit you. He's going he's gonna to do all the things to get you off your game and kind of get your mental not thinking about the game. So for Ev, he's just got to be, you know, locked in, be mentally tough because, you know, a guy like Mo Wagner, if you look at their wins this year, he's impacted the game a lot. So if you can neutralize him or outplay him, as Evan Mobley should outplay him, then we'll be in good position. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for, uh, for spending some time here. Before we get you out of here, I'm selfish. Carter mentioned it at the top. I'm Canadian. I have to thank you for your contributions to Canada basketball. Um, I remember one of the early versions of this podcast, I had Dwight Walton on who was talking about the leadership that you provided for the Canadian program. Uh, you and Corey being the, you know, those two Canadian NBA players that were always showing up. Can you kind of speak to what it's 
uh, like for you to see where the program has got to and now obviously Canada going to the Olympics the, this summer? Yeah, I mean, it makes me and Corey feel really old, you know, just being here, <laughs> we're kind of like the founding fathers of this whole NBA Canadian regime and this whole big wave. But it, it's, it's great to see, you know, all the talent that's come out of our country and, you know, the talent is playing at a high level. It's not just guys that are at the end of the bench, you know, scratching tooth and nails to be on the teams. We have guys that are making impact. We have guys that are all-stars. We have guys that are potentially this year's MVP, guys that are all NBA teams. So we got guys that are kind of in every stage of their career, but all being impact, impactful players in our league. And, um, you know, it's great to see that. Um, we wanted to translate in terms of the Olympics and uh, hopefully we can medal. Right on. I'm I'm excited to see uh, what that looks like, and I'm even more excited uh, to see what you guys do against the Orlando Magic. Best of luck, and uh, thank you so much for your time today. I right, appreciate it, fellas. Thank and you. And thank you for 2016. Yes, yeah. sir. <laughs> yes, absolutely. No problem. No problem. <laughs>